when you received Jesus, the same same power that was in Jesus, the same same power entered you. You became a son of God and you were born again. You who have been born again, you are like the wind. The wind blows. You can you can feel the effect. You can hear the effect, but you cannot see it. So now, the fact that you don't see the wind doesn't say that it is not existing. Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Welcome to our show. This is the day the Lord has made and we must be glad in it. We must rejoice in it. This is the day the Lord has made for you and for me and we shall rejoice in it. Welcome to the Marvelous Believers Show. This is a show for marvelous people like you and me. Mm -hmm. I am your host, Lucy Lepore, and tonight the Lord is uh, going to speak to us in an amazing way. I am so excited even to have our guest minister in the studio. He is not a stranger to some of us. I'm sure we have seen him in the past, Minister Bonnie Glorious, mm. and he is here with us again to bless us with what the Lord has laid in his heart for us. Mm. I believe the Lord is speaking to you every time that we tune in, mm. and in case you have missed our past shows, mm. after this you can always revisit and yeah. Uh, check us out. Mm. So I don't want to waste a lot of time. I believe we are set. We are ready to hear from the Lord. May God transform your lives. May you open your spiritual ears. May you allow Jesus to love you, to speak to you, to embrace you, to speak to your spirit, mm. because that's why we are here. Yeah. And I want to take this opportunity now to welcome Minister Bonnie Glorious. Thank you. Uh, maybe you can introduce yourself mm -hmm. uh, once again to anyone who may be joining us for Wonderful. the first time. Okay. And also just speak what the Lord has laid in your spirit. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Lucy. We are so grateful and happy to be here again. Yet another moment to share the word of God or the heart of God or even the mind of God to you. And we know you are going to be blessed. Bonnie Glorious is my name. And I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. And my heart is full of gladness to be here to pour out to you the mind of God. Allow me to pray with you before we set it up in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mind, your heart, your intention, oh God. You always have it inside of you, Father. You have hidden it before time. You've always placed it to be there. And it is all for the glory of the listener or the one who understands it. Thank you, Father. This day we are getting insight. We are getting wisdom. We are getting knowledge. We are getting understanding. And we are living according to what you are saying. We thank you and we bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. Allow me to, to share from what the Lord is leading us to. And as we were gathering something to share with the believer, and as we were in the place of looking what God is saying for us today, God happened to share his heart concerning the birth or the new birth. Yeah, and <laughs> by the goodness of God, sometimes... We can have something for long, but we can fail to understand the reason why it is there. Uh, for all that while, we had, we had minerals in Africa. We had gold. We had copper. We had all those minerals that we know, but we were not mining until now when the, the, the Europeans came and they revealed to us they showed to us that beyond the normal way of living, we have something. There is something that you are working on. There is something that is under your grounds in Africa. You have things that are so deep. And <laughs> it's so funny enough that even after knowing that we had some things, we had to go back to those same guys to ask them, how do we bring it out? And when they taught us how to bring it out, we had again to go back and ask them, how do we sell it or at what price, praise the Lord. Yeah, and th that is just a picture of how you can have something for long but fail to understand the, 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 the use of it or the reason why it is there or the purpose of it or how do you apply yourself to it, praise the Lord. And so as a believer, when we received salvation, when we believed in Jesus Christ, when we came to the point of 
receiving the gospel that Jesus died for us, he was buried for us, and he rose again. When we believed in that, at that very moment, what happened? We were born. There is a birth that happened at that moment. And that birth is called the new birth. You were born again. Hallelujah. And some points or some extent, uh, this birth is not according to the will of any man. It's not according to the heart of any man. It's not according to the willfulness, ama the idea of any man, but it is according to the will of God, as it is said in the book of John chapter 1. John chapter 1 from verse 12. He, he shows us what really happened. Uh, we, we have heard and we have known that we were born again. And at some point, it had become an analogy that when we are standing with people, when we are talking to people, you just tell them, my name is this and this, and I'm born again. And beyond the, that word, born again, what do we have there? Praise the Lord. And so we'll pick it up from there. And he says in the book of John chapter 1, the gospel of John chapter 1, from verse 11, he says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power. Number one, he gave them power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. He gave power to become the sons of God. This means when you believed in Jesus, when you received him as Lord of your life, he gave you the ability or you receive the power, the ability, the, the, the process that was required for you to become. I'm, I'm trying to look for a suitable word. He means when you believed in him, and take the analogy of a, of a young person, of a child, when they are born, they don't have the ability to form themselves in the mother's womb. They don't have the ability to come from the womb. And even in being raised, they did not have the ability to raise themselves. So now, the ability to become a son of God, it is not you who was required to be a child of God. It is not your power. It is not in your ability. But when you believed in Jesus, all the forces of God, all the life of God that was needed to bring a new person who is a child of God, or rather here he uses the word the son of God, you became a son of God and you were born again. When you received Jesus, there is a birth that happened. Hallelujah. And he says, which were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh or the will of any person or the will of any mind, but the will of God. It is the will of God that you are born. Praise the Lord. This new birth, it is the will of God that you are born again. Hallelujah. And then we will go further on this subject. In the same, same book, chapter 3, someone comes to Jesus, an old man called Nicodemus. He comes to Jesus and in this verse or in this context, he's going to show us what it really means to become a son of God. Amen. How is the life of the son of God lived? How do you live that life? He says, verse 1, there was a man the of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, full colon, meaning this is a continuation of what I'm, I've just started. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. Praise the Lord. So there is a life that this man had noted in the life of Jesus. And he says that we know that you are a teacher and you are come from God. Then he continues to say, we know that you are a teacher come from God. So yeah, for no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. Praise the Lord. So Nicodemus is coming with sort of a, uh, to Jesus, he receives it as a question, but Nicodemus comes with it as an explanation, an information of what Jesus really is. Hallelujah. He says, you, you are a teacher from God. You are not come from the will of men. You are not from anyone. You are not from the world. You are not of this world. Your nature is very different. Life, Yako, your life is not like the other lives. As in there is a difference between your life and every other life that we know. Even there are teachers in Israel, but even, in fact, he says, I am a teacher in Israel, mm -hmm. but even me, I've not seen a teacher who is like you. Mm -hmm. So now he says, uh, for no man can do these miracles and th that you do except God be with him. Hallelujah. He says, Jesus answers now what Nicodemus speaks is an explanation of fact, Jesus answers it as a question. Because now in the, Jesus sees the heart. 
he understands the spirit. Nicodemus simply was asking, how is it, how can I become like what you are? <laughs> How can I become like what you are doing? How can I do the things that you are doing? Praise the Lord. Because he came by night and Jesus, the Bible says Jesus answered. He saw the question in the spirit of this man. And so Jesus is answering. So now we are still speaking about the new birth. Mm. What really happened when you received Jesus? Come, uh, if you received Jesus, this is your nature. You are not working towards it. This already happened that time when you received Jesus. The show is called The Marvelous Believer. And if you're not a believer, today we'll give you the, the opportunity to, 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 end, to, to come in. In fact, as you're believing what Jesus is saying or the word of God, that is what qualifies you to be a believer. And we will, we will pray with you at the end of the show. Praise the Lord. So he says, Jesus answered and said unto him. So, wow. That is wonderful. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Or rather, he cannot see the kingdom of God working in his life. Mm -hmm. Jesus is saying, what you have seen me do, what you have seen me teach, or whatever you have seen in my life, it is as a result of my life, my nature. Mm -hmm. It is as a result of who has given, who has given birth to me. Let me use that analogy. So now he says, it's because I have been born again. And then he comes now to the place of Nicodemus. He tells him, no man can do these things except he's born again. Seeing them, it's seeing them work in your life. You cannot see the king, these things of the kingdom of God working in your life except you are born again. He goes further. Nicodemus said unto him, how, how is it possible for me to be born again? Oh, uh, I am very old. <laughs> In fact, maybe Nicodemus, maybe her mother was, let's say, dead. So he would ask, so now for, for the kingdom of God to be, for me to be qualified in the kingdom, me, I don't even have a mother. <laughs> so how is it possible for me to go back to, the, to my mother's womb and be born again? But then Jesus brings he answers it again as a question he says verily verily i say unto you except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god praise the lord so now nicodemus is only stuck at the place of the bath of the water because born of water it is born of the flesh born of what nicodemus is speaking about because jesus cannot answer outside the question so he answers inside the question and also in his answer, he continues to expound more. What does it mean to be born of water and be born of the spirit? So he brings now a new thing. You must be born of the spirit. Praise the Lord. So now the birth of the water is the physical birth. Everyone is born. You are born. You who is following us, you are born physically. But now there's another birth that makes it possible for you to come into the kingdom of God and now, uh, for you to see the kingdom of God and for you to enter into the kingdom of God. And this is what we are explaining today. Praise the Lord. So he, he continues to say that which is born of flesh is flesh. And verse six, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Praise the Lord. He says, when you, Nicodemus, when you are speaking to me about going back to the womb of your mother, and I'm not denying that fact, you are born of your mother, but now there is a new birth, and this birth is of the spirit. You are born of your mother, you were flesh. So live alone with the flesh. Now I'm speaking of another birth, the birth of the spirit. You are born of the spirit. There, there, there is another birth that is required of you for you to see what you are seeing in my life. Because Jesus was answering a uh, a speaking of fact over his life. Nicodemus said, I can see something in you. I can see the life of God in you. There is the working of God inside of your life. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And now in, in that working, Jesus tells him, what happened to me? I was born of flesh. I was born of spirit. Jesus became a man. In fact, he took all our weaknesses. He understood all the weaknesses. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that he was tempted as every man is tempted. In fact, he says he feared one day. Jesus was afraid. The king of glory, deity in man. When God entered a human body and landed, the first person who is an example of the life of a believer, <laughs> the first marvelous believer, <laughs> was Jesus. <laughs> 
Wow. And Jesus, a time came and he was afraid. The Bible says he feared greatly. When death was ahead of him, death was just somewhere before him. He feared and he prayed to God, but he left himself to God. But there's another man, the man of the spirit, the spirit, the, the man of the spirit. That is the assurance that even if I died physically, Jesus was now in this mind. Even if I die physically, mm. there is another me. Whoa. There is another power Whoa. that is going to come through hell and hell yes. and come through the stones, come through the soldiers, yes. come and enter into my body and this will bring me up. And now when Paul saw that mystery, Paul says that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that same power is inside the believer. When you received Jesus, the same, same power that was in Jesus, the same, same power entered you. Praise the Lord. Wow. I went ahead of myself. Let me go back for myself and then come again. <laughs> so he says, uh, that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Then verse 7, he says, Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. Do not be swayed. Do not think along that line. But Jesus goes now beyond that. And this is the reason why we came today. He says, Verse 8, the wind blows where it listeth, and you hear the sound thereof, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. Is, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So now, this is what Jesus is saying. As the wind blows, according, according to the wisdom of this world, according to the knowledge of this world, according to what we know, you, we, we were taught that to only believe in what we see. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. we, were, we have been taught, Ama, when we went to the system of this, the school of this world, mm -hmm. we were taught that something is believed to exist when you see it. Mm -hmm. But now Jesus comes and says, this is the reality. Even when, when he goes ahead in the next chapter 4, he speaks about God. He says, God is a spirit. Praise the Lord. Here he's saying, them that are born of flesh, they are flesh. But to them that are born of spirit, they are spirit. So this spirit is further explained in chapter 4. So he says, I tell you the truth. God is spirit. Jesus was having a conversation with the woman at the well. He says that, I tell you the truth. The days are coming. And they have already come. When true worshippers, or the real worshippers, according to God, truth means reality. The true worshippers will worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. Praise the Lord. So he meant that they must come to the place of reality and they must worship him in spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, so now he now speaks that the wind blows where it listed. Or the wind goes where it wills. The wind blows where it, it is willing to blow. And you hear the sound of the wind, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. And then he says, so is every man who is born of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. So this is you, the believer. Jesus was explaining to Nicodemus what will happen after the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ, when we believed in Jesus, when we were born again, many of us knows, know that analogy of being born again. So when you were born again, what happened? There was a birth that happened. You were born. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. There is a birth that happened at that time. When you go to the book of James, now after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, James comes with a revelation. He says... In the book of James, chapter 1, verse 18, he joins with what we read in the book of John 1, that they receive the power. You receive the ability to be, to, to become, to be born again when you believed in Jesus. So James says 1, verse 18, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his wow. creatures. Praise the Lord. So here James is bringing a revelation that when God, 
or when we believed in Jesus, we were born again. Because what happened, we believed in the word of God. We believed in Jesus. And when we believed in Jesus, we were born. We received the ability. The believing of Jesus, who is the word of God, gave us the ability to be born again. Praise the Lord. When you believed in Jesus, the word of God, you were born again. Mm. Mm. I'm, okay, someone is asking, are you trying to say that I've been born of the spirit or born of God? No, I'm not trying to say. This is what the Bible says. He says that you have been born again. You have been born. When you believed, you were born. And you were born not of the will of man or the will of the flesh, but of the will of God. You are born of the word of God. Hallelujah. In the same same, uh, in the epistles, in the book of First Peter, chapter one. First Peter chapter one, verse twenty-three. He says, "Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible, by the word of God." which lives and abides forever. Praise the Lord. So now he, he further explains the difference between being born again of the corruptible seed and the incorruptible seed. So he explains that the incorruptible, the corruptible seed, sorry, looks like this. He says, for all flesh, this is the corruptible, the flesh, the born of water, the first bath of this body. He says, for all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass, the grass with us and the flower thereof falls away. But then he continues to explain and he says, but the word of God, the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which the gospel is preached unto you. So the meaning of the gospel is to teach you who you are. Amen. Praise the Lord. The gospel expounds to you who you already are. When the Europeans came to Africa, they did not put those golden mines under the African continent or under the African soil, but they came to show them what they already had. It is called extraction. They, were, they taught them the, the, the methods of extracting what is already inside of them. So now when we do when someone ministers to you or when someone speaks to you of who you are, what they do, they are extracting from within you. You already have it, but now they are drawing it from you. They are bringing it from you. Right now, as I'm speaking, I can see guys from within them. You feel something burning inside of you. What is burning inside of you is the reality of who you are. It is showing you that whatever this man is speaking about or what God is telling me about is already in me. Praise the Lord. It's not an introduction. It, it is a continual explanation of who you are. You have been born again of the word. You have been born of the word of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he says, the wind blows where it listeth. You cannot see the wind. But you can feel the effect of the wind. So the man who is in salvation and you who have been born again, this is what happens to your life. Because Jesus has said, so is every man that is born of the spirit. You can see, you cannot see the wind, but you can feel the effect. Like the example that I have just given, that is a, a simple effect. And this effect, this effect applies to everything that concerns you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When the wind is blowing, you can see papers. You can see dust. You can see the wind. Amen. Sometimes it becomes so mighty, it becomes in big torrents. Amen. And to some points, it becomes the storm. When it is applied in the sea, it becomes the storm. It lifts up even the heavy ships. It lifts up. It becomes tsunami. <laughs> the tsunami goes and uproots a house from the foundations. This is just a physical explanation of what, you, what the man of the spirit is. The man of the spirit is so mighty. The, the wind, you who have been born again, you are like the wind. The wind blows. You can, you can feel the effect. You can hear the effect, but you cannot see it. So now, the fact that you don't see the wind 
doesn't say that it is not existing. We can't see the wind, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We never saw the minerals. When we go to South Africa, at those days, we did not see the gold that was under the, the fields of Johannesburg. But when the Europeans came, they started up what was already there. It was there. It was there. It was there. And today, God is starting you up to that. You who have been born again, yeah. the marvelous believer, you are there. You exist. You are there. And your effect is so heavy. <laughs> the effect of the believer is so heavy. And from today, you are going to see your effect. Men, you are going to see the effect of that thing because now you have known. And after you have known, you will walk in that truth. The same, same effect applies to sicknesses. Praise the Lord. Mm. The believer in Christ is not just the flesh. You are not only the body that we can see. The real you is not seen. The real effect of you is not seen. Uh, in those days, they only saw one Jesus. And the devil in his own craftiness thought that when I kill this Jesus, when I kill him, when, he's, when he dies, or when he gives his life for them, but according to my mind, I think I'm killing him, I will stop what he is doing. Because the Pharisees, they were showing the expression of the evil one, and they wanted to kill him. So now when, when they thought that they had executed the task, they thought that they had finished it all with Jesus. They thought that the cross was the last place. But they never knew. They never knew. The Bible says that had the rulers of this world known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Mm -hmm. If they understood what they were doing, if they had learned to understand what they were doing, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So they killed one Jesus. <laughs> they killed one Jesus. Mm -hmm. But see today, many, many years down the line, we have Jesus in you, we have Jesus in me. They say that the Christian, the, the church, is the, is the biggest religion in the world. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The church is not a religion. The church is a body. It is the body of Christ. So they killed one Jesus, but today we have many Jesuses all around. We have the Jesus in me. We have the Jesus in you. So this is what is happening inside of your life. Yeah, they thought that you, maybe before that you did not understand who you were. But right now, Jesus is revealing to the many Jesuses around us, and you included, that you are a spirit and your effect is seen. You have been born again. You have been born again. You have been born of God. You have been born of the word of God. What you saw in Jesus, he says, when you will be born again, more of it will happen to you. More of it will happen to you. More of it is going to happen to your life. And this is what happens when you believed in Jesus and you walk in this truth, you walk in this knowledge, these things will be seen. Hallelujah. These things, these effects will be seen. They are happening in your life from now. They are being seen inside of your life. You can see them. You can see them. Praise the Lord. They are being seen. Yes. Allow me to pray with you. Marashati. Dear Lord, we are so grateful. Thank you for this life. Thank you for this knowledge, our Father. You say that wisdom is a principal thing. I thank you because in all our getting, we are understanding wisdom. We are getting this wisdom, our Father. We are walking in this wisdom. We are understanding this wisdom. Our here, our listener today, the one who is listening to your word, we thank you for the power, for the insight, for the insight power that is starting them up to live the life as you had in as you had wished them to live as according to your will oh god because of your own will you begat us of the word of truth thank you for your word thank you for this truth we love you and we thank you thank you for your word we are so grateful for your word you are so wonderful it is being seen the effect is being seen the effect is being seen thank you father thank you for wema tv the effect is being seen oh god thank you our lord thank you jesus it is exploding in all the corners of the world it is being seen in the north 
It is being seen in the south where there is hunger. Yeah, the hunger is filling the world, but you are feeling the hunger. You are the filler of the hunger. You are increasing your word. It is being seen. It is being seen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for all ministers that are involved herein. Thank you, Father, for your power, your insight. Thank you for all the things that are happening here. They have, they have an inside power. They have an inside information. They have an inside power that is pushing every activity that is happening in this place. We thank you and we bless your name. You are so good. You are so wonderful, our Father. We thank you and we bless your name in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yes, Pastor wow. Lisa. That was, that was powerful. That was Amen. powerful and that is power. Yeah. That is the power we have received. The mm. first scripture mm. Bonnie Glorious read was, for them that believed, he gave them the power to become. The it is power that made you. Yeah. You are made of power. Amen. If we cut you, maybe in our eyes we see blood. There yeah. is power. Yeah. You Inside you is power. And mm. he said, the same power that raised Jesus, the mm. same power power that raised Jesus mm. is a power that lives in you. Amen. That's dunamis. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. That's the kind of wind he is talking about. Yeah. The effects must be seen. Yeah. And let me tell you, mm -hmm. don't underestimate yourself. You yeah. are a marvelous believer. You are so powerful. Yeah. Your effects are felt. They are seen. Even mm. without prophecy, they are seen with the naked eye. Yeah. We, will, we see them. Mm. Don't underestimate yourself. Don't underestimate what God is doing in your life. Yeah. Don't underestimate the power that you have received through the new birth. Amen. Those effects, mm. you don't need a prophet. You yeah. see them with your eyes. Mm. They are all over. It, they are written mm. in your career, in your business, in mm. your family, yeah. even in your physical body. Those yeah. effects, mm. sickness comes and it just runs away yeah. because of the power that is within you. Yeah. Glory be to Jesus. That's Hallelujah. the marvelous believer. Mm. It cannot be better. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much, Bonnie Glorious, for being with us. Mm. Thank you so much also for keeping it to TV, watching us every Monday, watching us every time you tune in. We are so blessed. And uh, let's continue in this fellowship. Mm -hmm. This is Marvelous Believers Show on Wema TV. Mm -hmm. God bless you.